If you're like me, you use any excuse to buy a gun and justify it to your wallet. It's either, hmm, I've been working really hard. Maybe it's time I treat myself to something I've always wanted. Or maybe it's time to jump to a more powerful caliber and you walk into a gun shop to peruse, only to find yourself saying, wow, would you look at that? They have this gun and this caliber on sale? Well, I guess I have to get it now. Meanwhile, the price deduction might be like $10. Or in my case, it was a little bit of both. Um, as a kid, I was enamored by Westerns. Drawing from a leather holster with a big gun shooting a big powerful caliber seemed to be just about all life needed to be about. I had gotten my Glock 26 a few months prior and I thoroughly enjoyed carrying and shooting it. Now, I'm a practical guy with not a lot of money. So I convinced myself that I needed a revolver, specifically a revolver I could carry, and I needed it because I needed a more powerful round to go hiking through the hill country of Texas where I reside. So as I began researching, I came across a couple of different platforms. Um, I found a Smith & Wesson 686 and a four inch barrel um, that I thought would be quite enjoyable. I saw a Ruger GP100 in a four inch bar barrel, it's, it's, it's competitor. And I also looked into a few other platforms such as the Ruger LCR and the Ruger SP101. So I found a local gun store with those guns in their inventory, specifically the Smith & Wesson. And I thought I'd take a trip just to see what they had to offer in person. Uh, long story short, I went in for the Smith & Wesson and came out with the Ruger SP-101. For everyday carry, the, the Smith & Wesson was possible. Um, but once I held the SP-101 in my hands, I felt the finish. I imagined carrying this, this glossy stainless steel revolver with wood grips and a leather holster that was arguably pocket-sized and easy to conceal when I needed it to be. I began reaching for my credit card. Flash forward about eight months and has become both my winter carry and my woods carry. I mean, this gun is a good gun. It's robust, it's powerful, it's concealable, um, but it isn't all perfect and we're about to discuss why. So we're gonna be talking about a couple of things. Uh, primarily everyday carry usability and shootability. And I'll go ahead and give you my concluding thoughts afterwards. Remember, these are just my thoughts um, on the gun and uh, my experience with it. So for everyday carry usability, it's a solid gun. It's weighing in at 26 ounces. Um, so if you ever ran out of bullets and needed to hit someone over the head, the SP-101 would perform well. With a barrel length of two uh, inches and, and a quarter and a capacity of five rounds, I reckon the SP-101 is plenty for what I intended to use it for, right? So for self-defense against both beast and man. The custom stippled and checkered Audemars hardwood grips gives me a really strong purchase on the gun while also providing an element of form that I really wasn't accustomed to. If you switch over to rubber grips, the gun would be far easier to shoot. Um, but this EDC, you know, it's, it's a testament of my childhood. It's, it's a testament of my uh, affinity for Westerns. So I have to forego the whole rubber grips for something a little bit more classy. Um, and so with those wood grips, I'm perfectly happy with that. With a proper holster, one where the trigger is completely protected, the firearm is held securely and allows you to draw the firearm reliably with a full grip on the handle, as suggested by active self-protection. The Ruger SP-101 can be a comfortable carry gun. While heavy, a good belt and a good holster, this one is in DeSantis holster off of Amazon, it goes a long way in concealing this revolver responsibly and comfortably. Now it should be noted that there are some criticisms with carrying a leather holster. The first is that leather can change shape over time, especially after long hard use and exposure to different elements, as opposed to maybe kydex. So keep that in mind, um, if or when selecting a holster, Personally, I've carried this holster twice a week, particularly when hiking during the summer months in Texas and when running errands for the last six months, and I haven't had any issues with the holster. This thumb brake keeps it secure, the belt loops are rigid, and because I carry outside the waistband on my hip, the SP-101 doesn't dig into my waist and is easily concealable when wearing t-shirts like the one I have on. But again, this is from my experience, which can be very different from your experience. Um, I'm about 6'1", 195, 200 pounds, uh, with a slimmer frame for reference. So it carries comfortably for me in and around town, out on the forest, where I do a lot of hiking. So now we get to shootability. In general, revolvers are known to be pretty simple to shoot. There's a grip, there's a trigger, there's a hammer, um, and then there's a cylinder. Obviously there are more parts, but those are the parts that you're going to interact with the most. The grip is large enough for bigger hands and small enough to keep it concealed comfortably for the waist. The trigger and hammer are both pretty heavy, the heaviest of all pistols I've ever shot, so ranging from semi-automatic locks, Smith & Wesson 686s, um, single action 1911s, so on and so forth, like this heavy, this trigger is heavy. When I shot the LCR, 
um, which is also made by Ruger, but it's a, it's a much more uh, lighter gun. The OCR has such a light trigger pull that I was able to fire all five shots quickly when I needed to. So additionally for many new shooters of the SP-101, um, say someone like my girlfriend, while she found the SP-101 to be easy to reload, to aim, to grip, she also found, the, found that it required a lot more trigger strength, a lot more finger strength to pull that trigger and she needed to practice it to become accustomed to the trigger. Um, again, this is nothing that practice can't overcome, but it is something to expect out of the box. So in conclusion, um, would the Ruger SP-101 be my first gun? Frankly, no. It's a handsome gun. It's probably the most handsome snubby I've ever seen. Um, does it carry well? Yes. Is it reliable? Undoubtedly. Um, but if I was a first time gun owner, I might be getting some more practice from a bigger gun, like a Smith & Wesson, um, like a GP100, uh, 686, right? These are just bigger barrels, uh, longer barrels, um, and these longer barrels would result in an improved sight picture. And oftentimes these guns have a crisper trigger. Um, so that would mean that I would, you know, would it be more confidence inspiring with a crisper trigger, with a lighter, uh, longer sight radius, you're able to get a clear sight picture, and then you're able to put those shots on target. Now, if you already have a Glock or a SIG, uh, or you just want a classy barbecue gun that's a, also a viable EDC, the Ruger SP-01 would be the job. Right? I'd pull the trigger, plan intended. Um, so if you like this channel, feel free to hit like on the video and subscribe. If you have a question, leave a comment. Um, and always remember, knowledge is power and precision is practice. Keep your friends close and your grouping closer.